Welcome to the Soul Patch Podcast. Tainted perception distorts my true meaning is blurred. I am lost to the echoes of whisper and speak in a matter of... We're back, baby. <laughs> Pretty much. What's up, guys? <laughs> that, that's, how, that's how it goes. That works. <laughs> there we go. Um, hey, everyone. Welcome, uh, you know, to the Soul Patch Podcast. It's great to be yeah. back. Kev, it's right? been a while. I know. Yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, it's been a busy yeah. like. I mean, for everyone who's who's, if anyone out there is still subscribed, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Off. You've thank really you. held you've held out for a long time. We're yeah. Uh, if you've kept us in your podcast list and suddenly we've popped up, that's that's awesome. And you know, it's we've been gone for a while, just all busy with other things, of course. And we're hopefully back um, for at least some amount of time here, or at least somewhat regularly, rather. Yeah, uh, right. How's how's your other project going? You you're you you know business. Uh, you're starting a business. Yeah, yeah. So as might have been mentioned in the previous podcasts, um, some friends and I started a company. Um, it's going good. We're building an app. It'll launch um, late April. We finally have a date, which is uh, pretty exciting because that's like that's usually one of the first things people ask you when you tell them that you're building something. They're always like, "All right, when?" Right, and, right you know, until you've hired the engineers and everything, you don't really know, you know, when, and, you know, in the early phase stage, you don't even know if, you know, <laughs> things are going to happen. It feels so. like it's far away, but it's, but it's, it, it is, and it isn't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it's so, there's so much work to be done probably. Yeah. It does not feel far away. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, but when you say April to someone who's not, who's just waiting for it, it's kind of like, yeah. that's a you know that's a million years from now but yeah. six months and tell yeah. me about it later <laughs> yeah you. and that that should be um the outside uh time limit so it should be before that that's like i think what the the engineers were saying like that's the the max so yeah are so you gonna hide any fun. easter eggs in the app little, uh, like, not little yet. bald pictures of <laughs> ryan somewhere that you someone not will yet in. not yet <laughs> but um yeah so that's that's uh been keeping me a little busy but not really that's i'm not um really hands-on with it these days i've got a lot of um more time to myself than i have before which is nice um that's i cool. love this season and yeah yeah so, i love i love the fall yeah. we uh, uh, uh maybe our our listeners know or they they may not know uh kev and i started a uh language learning podcast called the a to z english podcast and uh so we've been uh, kind of uh doing the same thing you're doing you know starting a, a business um it's slow going you know it just takes time to you know get the wheel spinning but uh mm -hmm. yeah so it's uh, so you know with those side projects we kind of got sidetracked from the soul patch but yeah i missed it you yeah, know like same. i missed these conversations that we we had weekly and I think our, our listeners out there, people that were dedicated to it, also probably would be, you know, happy to to listen to another episode and catch up with us. So, yeah, how are you guys handling the the you know post COVID world? I mean, is COVID it's, done? I think I think is it's it nice. Post? And like <laughs> relative to the soul patch, I, I think we started the soul patch during the period where the three of us were not going to campus, like the three of us being Oh teachers, yeah, that's right. right? It was, yeah, so it yeah. Was kind of, it was kind of a nice uh, way to socialize and hang out. That was uh, kind of the point at the beginning almost. Yeah, right. right. Um, so it's cool that we can keep this going uh, post COVID. I think we should. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I Everybody. still don't socialize that much anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, and you're down at the other campus, Jack. So it's not like we see you often. And Ryan and sure. my, our schedules are crazy busy. I'll see Ryan for like two minutes in passing between classes. Anyway, it's like, hey, what's up? Oh, nice coffee in the class. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this is still more catching up. Before we hit the record button, Ryan and I were talking about, uh, you know, I, I was kind of coming around to the idea that online teaching is maybe the the future um but you know after having a semester in the classroom and and just being able to like interact with a student face to face mm -hmm. there's just no substitute for it i don't no. think there ever will be i mean un until we're not apes anymore we, we evolve past you know what we are i don't see how it could Once ever we can be better through the matrix and plug the yeah, information into our head right maybe. right 
And I think for listeners, uh, especially ones that haven't had a lot of experience in Korea, something to tack onto that. Everybody knows internationally, like Korea equals high tech, right? Yeah, yeah. This is technology hub of the planet. And Korea equals like a really aggressive education system, right? So, you know, you got Singapore, Korea. These are like the big places for education globally. I think it's worth noting that the three of us, I mean, we would probably in agreement, we just kind of stated that we're in agreement that having attempted to use like, you know, the Zoom and the e-class and online stuff, Canvas, not that they need a shout out, <laughs> just happened. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Whatever. It's an okay, it's an okay website. So many good <laughs> things on there. Um the uh all that all that being used for a couple of years by a, a community, a world like Korea that's very um tech savvy. Everybody's got devices, you know, cameras, mics, no problem with stuff like this. Coming back to campus. I mean, I'm doing all the, I do like a tutoring one-on-one. You talk to students and it's, it's unanimous. It's unanimous. Yeah, it's trying yeah. to impress you. They're like, no, this is better. This mm-hmm. is better. I need to be in favor person. It could be because I get bored at home. I get distracted at home. Uh, so technology is cool and everything, but even in a place like Korea, that's really, really uh, well-versed in tech and aggressive about education um you got 20 year olds that are like no yeah that is fascinating because that's like i mean it's like like asking a kid like do, like do you want to eat ice cream for dinner ever for the rest of your life and they're yeah. like no i need a i need a vegetable you know it's like right. it, it's Eventually. yeah and 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 they they understand that um i don't you know yeah that's that's it's it's kind of um inspiring you know like that they're yeah that they yeah. realize that I kind of expected it to be a little bit like what you were saying, you know, like we're going online, you know, technology's coming, you know, get, our jobs will be going out the window, you know. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. We'll right. Just, we'll just automate they'll, all of our classes. They'll just, you know? yeah, some AI jack will, they'll they'll own the rights to my, uh, you know, yeah. my visage or something. But but it's across the board. In in my tutoring sessions with these students, when I, I always ask them the same question, I try to make it as balanced and fair as possible so they can answer either way. But they always come back. It doesn't matter if like the professor was using um uh, ppts or pre-recorded or zoom lecture um you know online like uh, discussion boards whatever there it's across the board it's like yeah it's nice because i don't have to commute mm-hmm. that's, that's the, the big one only, that's the only thing and everything else trumps that because it's like 90 percent benefit over here 10 percent, i don't have to commute and i can take class in my pajamas like yeah. but that's not yeah. that's not uh it's not nearly enough compared to being able to be on campus socializing with people and you know so that was cool how how about this one like how about the fact that korea still has a mask mandate (laughs) which is like it's it's still (laughs) messing me up because like i cannot i don't i i always you always fill in the gaps you know i think again that's like a it's, it's like an evolutionary thing or something where you know we look at the eyes of someone and you think you know what their nose and their mouth looks like and, yeah. then, <laughs> and then and then suddenly they pull the mask down and you're like you look totally different than i thought you looked you know like yeah. i don't know who you are at all i wouldn't be able to you know so i i only know my students right now just from eyes uh because everyone's yeah. got a mask on so this uh, it's, it's just a weird thing you know and i just wonder I Jack, yeah. that um, I just saw in one of the, the news tickers the other day, you know, like down at the bottom of the news that the they were saying after the next wave of COVID passes, mm-hmm. they are going to put taking the mask mandates, at least on the table. They're going to discuss taking mask mandates away. Yeah. So that might be coming in the future here. I mean, it, it was just, you know, small ticker on the side, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, the outside mask thing is ridiculous. Like I, I often well, that's been gone off. for a while. Is that gone now? Okay. Have... I wasn't oh, that's sure been gone for that. since May, I think, actually, you haven't had to wear a mask outside. Um, oh, okay. For a okay. While. I still see people just wearing them. I just think people, I oh, just yeah. figure 10 I years don't. from now, people will still be wearing masks. Like, they just like, that's, this is, it'll become part I'm of very... your, like, you know, your underwear, your socks and your mask, you know, like, we just... <laughs> well, that, that's something I'm really curious about is what, what's going to happen in Korea once the mask mandate goes, because unlike the States, Korea already had a history of people wearing masks when they were sick and for pollution days and things. 
And so I, I think even once mask mandates are gone, people will, some people will still be masking up. I mean, mm -hmm. for me, I'm happy wearing a mask on the subway when there's a hundred people in yeah, two yeah. square feet of me, you know, like, yeah, I, man, I'm, like I'm okay I, for that one. I'm not thrilled with like, you know, all of society wearing masks. I think it's terrible for children, especially when they're trying to like, you know, develop, you know, relationships, oh, yeah. and emotions. It's freaking terrible. Well, but even mom and dad I have noses. Kev, I, I agree with Kev on that. I think when you're crammed on a, you know, in a flight, you're in this little tube. Um, when you're in the subway, the bus, yeah. I like it. I like that. That's not like yeah. a standard. It's like you don't you don't drink open beverages on the bus, and you put your mask on. Like these are just like social. I don't know. It's become like social etiquette now, almost. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'll probably wear one when I fly back to the states. Uh, I'm going back to America for the first time in a long time. Um, I will wear it on the plane. You know, mm -hmm. I'll wear it in the airport. Um, I'm I'm kind of curious to see what kind of reaction I get when I get to the United States. And if my family, if we are wearing masks as we walk through the airport in, say, like Orlando, are we getting, is, are, is somebody going to say something? I kind of almost want like some Trumper to like come up to me uh, and like take that, get that thing off your face. You, uh, you know, you I, just, I just got I just got back from flying all over the place and yeah. airports airports it's just like being in korea people are wearing masks okay but yeah but then once you step outside it depending where you are it's just like boom and they're gone yeah yeah once you're you're out it's well, I don't, I don't how, are, how do you guys feel about the classrooms with masks though because i yeah. hate it i no, absolutely I hate, it. hate it yeah but but i mean in terms of you know protection for getting even just getting colds and stuff we meet 200 students daily you know a couple times a week like that's a lot of people. That's almost like a subway ride every day mm -hmm. that you're in there. I'm I'm kind of mixed on that. I'm I it's like Bangkok Mizu. Bangkok uh, philosophy, right? Um, you can go to Bangkok and you can be really careful about what you eat and drink, or you could just go out on day one and just buy a bunch of street food and then uh, shit for three days, and then <laughs> once you have the bacteria build up, you know, the immune system to fight it. You're, you're all good, man. So maybe so we're, saying, like, like, we're like we're like superheroes, off, just, you know. Try yeah, just try and get COVID at the beginning of every semester. And... Yeah, wasn't wasn't it your buddy that you went to Vietnam with, and he was like that? He's like, I'm just drinking the tap water. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out so well. <laughs> no, it's just one tap, you know, straight. Uh, yeah. yeah, iron Horrible. gut, iron <laughs> gut. Let's do iron this. Gut. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. yeah, it really is. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, Kev, I, I know what you're saying. Like, um, as a teacher, and I mean, it's, it's. Because a lot of students teacher, are still going to be wearing masks, I assume, even if in you're the a teacher anywhere. It's a thing, right? That you get a cold once a year, once a semester, because you're just around bodies and people. Um, I don't get colds anymore, which is kind of fantastic. Mm, uh, right. And I, so I think there's definitely a benefit to it. But yeah, we're communications teachers. It's absurd to have everybody with masks on. Like, I'm talking to class like this, you know? Like, you gotta be kidding, you know? Facial expressions muted. Yeah, uh, I, I can't understand. Uh, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I know part of it is I'm going deaf, and, you know? Like, I'm, I'm certain, <laughs> and I'm 45 years old, and, you know? But also, just like, how many times I have to ask someone to repeat, <laughs> and I, I feel yeah. like I'm at the, like the third time, I just pretend that I understood what they said. I'm like, yeah, uh, let's just move the hard on, part, you know? Yeah. Not understanding, but also so many times a, one student will have like a quick reply and it's like the voice was from over there somewhere. Who, who <laughs> oh, said Oh, yeah, it? yeah, yeah. You don't know yeah, yeah. who replied. <laughs> right. You're just like, you're right. scanning the space and then like you say, hey, can you say that again? And you hear it again and you're looking and you still don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where is it coming from? But I, I do think uh, having done now uh, so much you know, so much having had so much time wearing masks, I've found that in class, if I'm on stage, uh, you know, in lecture mode, yeah, it's really hard to be able to um, communicate. But when I'm one on one, so if we're doing like speaking activities and stuff, and I'm down on the ground with the mm. student, and you're sitting there like face to face like this, um, you can eyes have so much expression. Mm. Yeah, you can really get along. It's it's all mm -hmm. right. 
the volume. One thing I'm debating doing for if and when the mask mandate drops in the classroom is I'm going to see how the students react first. I'm going to play it by ear. I'm not going to straight take mine off. What I'm thinking of doing is telling the students on day one, I'm going to warn them, but I'll take my mask off when I'm lecturing at the front. And then when I start walking around again and I'm like with them doing group stuff, I'll put it back on. I'm thinking about, yeah, but I'm not cool. sure. This is just a debate. I'm I'm trying to figure out how I want to handle it. And again, I want to see how they handle it. I don't know if it, if the rule is that, that we don't have to wear a mask, I'm not saying what you should do. Anybody do whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, but I'm just not going to wear one. Mm. Um, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. wear one. Am I the only holdout of the whole, like I've, I've never had COVID. I, I want, I, I think everybody in our, our department has had COVID except yeah. me. A couple of people I, twice. Couple yeah. of people twice, yeah. So what the hell is going on? I I I keep waiting. You know, I'm just like it's gonna happen, I mean, right? Who might have had it? Like I had it last yeah. week. So for listeners, I'm still alive. Um, <laughs> it was uh, it was a mild cold, right? And I think it's totally possible. Like my father's never had it. My mom, I think, has had it once or twice, at least once. Um, everybody in my family back in the states has had it. But he skated and I thought, oh, maybe, you know, people say genetic, maybe you, you won't get it. So, you know, I'm feeling kind of like, you know, Superman. I'm like, yeah, cool. And then I uh, went down to Busan to see some friends, got a scratchy throat and was like, yeah, I live next to a testing center. I'll get tested. Um, I could have missed it. Yeah, I could have missed it. Might have yeah. had it. And just, I, I think I, I think I I probably had it and just was asymptomatic or or so it was That's so mild that I didn't, you know. Um, I was also bitten by a radioactive spider when I was 11. So, um, I, you know, that could be part of it as well. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah explains <laughs> the physique. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, yes. That's Sorry, right. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I'm sure for our YouTube watchers out there. Um, so maybe we can uh, uh, pivot a little bit here. And I'm just I've, got, wondering... I've got something that I want oh, to sorry, bring. If we want to go into Korea, if we're going to yeah, pivot, yeah. I've got a topic I'm, I'm hoping I'm, I'm going to offend Ryan with. So Ryan, Please. be ready. Be ready. <laughs> um, have you guys, I'm sure you guys have heard your students ask, or probably they've asked you at the beginning of the semester, do you guys like mint chocolate ice cream? Oh, it's my favorite. No, nope. I love it. Interesting. So yeah. Ryan's a note, but you you guys have, must have heard your students talk about this before, right? Like in the past year, yeah. like it's just, yeah. it's a topic and I don't know why. Wait, mint chocolate so, is, 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 is trending basically? Is that what you're trying to say? It's more than trending. Guys, open up your chat really quick. I'm going to send you a couple of pictures and you need to tell me what you think. So, oh, I know what you're going to send me. <laughs> there's That's a couple. There's, there's, there's a few. Wait a okay, minute. Okay. Yeah, I know. So the know. first one I found, this is from um, when this article came out in January and we have this which is mint choco soju. Oh, dude, no. I saw this. I saw this at a <laughs> vegan restaurant last semester, and I couldn't believe it was real. Yeah. <laughs> so this is why I figured I would offend Ryan, the, our foodie of, of the group. So it starts with mint choco um, soju, which already is crazy, but there have been some weird soju flavors in the past as well. The next one that I remember seeing, this was past this past summer, I think, maybe in like June or so. Can I can I was... guess what it is before yeah, you go say? for it? Is it uh, duck bokey? Oh no, I haven't seen that one. You Whoa, didn't see the mint what? choco duck bokey? What? Yeah, no, the one nightmare. Jack, the one I just the one I just sent is mint no. choco dipping sauce for KFC. Oh, for chicken? Yeah, for oh, chicken for fried man. chicken. God. The listeners, you need to Google this right now because the <laughs> color is just lurid, lurid is the right word. I don't know. Just disgust. Yeah, it's, it's this like, mint oh, color. Yeah, the color is, is ter- it's almost it's like a, a pastel it. kind of like uh, terrible. It's, it's not, it, it doesn't look like <laughs> food. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. And the people I've seen that talk AFC, about it in the, in the threads, they're just like, no. Yeah. So, so that was about as bad as I thought it would wow. get until just a couple of days ago, which is why I wanted to bring this up again. I saw another thread on Reddit for this, which is a yeah. mint chocolate hamburger. I saw that. I thought it was a joke. I, I honestly thought it was like like someone made that as a joke. Yeah. yeah. What what the fuck is happening in <laughs> Korea <laughs> with the mint choco? The only, the only thing that I can think of that's even close to this was that gives it any right to exist is back <laughs> the right to exist. around... Nice. Maybe like four or five years ago, 
mm -hmm. in around Shinsa, there was a Chicago, maybe a Shinsa, Chicago deep dish pizza. Okay. And I'm from, you know, Midwest and, you know, lived in Chicago. And I will say this on record, deep dish is bullshit. So already, <laughs> already it's, 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 in a, it's in a bad category. And it was um, blueberry. Blueberry, Oof. blueberry pizza. Yeah. yeah, I never tried it, but I kind of gave it a pass because I'm like, all right, I once made a pizza with pomegranate tomato sauce. You know, it's acidic, you know, acidity and, you know, tomato. So maybe it's like a blueberry tomato type sauce thing. So um, it wasn't like it wasn't like a blueberry pie or anything like that. It wasn't it had yeah, it like pizza. pizza components in it. I guess with, with blueberry. Wow. I mean, this is Jack, hearsay. did you ever I see in Thailand? This. I saw yeah. this when I was traveling there a while ago. I saw um blueberry uh Pringles, the chips. No, I I they did I remember there, seeing that. that I didn't want to yeah. try it because I, I have in the cupboard fan, right but... now. I didn't buy it, girlfriend bought it, but in the cupboard I have um caramel butter pringles and they're caramel closed because that will never be open <laughs> <laughs> Not happening. i mean sweet and savory is i can i can understand that but 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 a yeah. burger wait, wait what is it is it Mint an abomination to the to the burger or or to the dessert i mean it's just like they're why put them together in a, I mean, just fat, a and sugar, fat and sugar i can kind of get i've seen something like this before like oreos on a burger uh but Again, for listeners, you just need to Google KFC <laughs> mint choco dipping sauce. That is one of the most foul looking images. It's like someone took my dinner and dipped it in Pepto Bismol. Like, oh, <laughs> that's what it looks like. But like Pepto a green version of yes. Pepto Bismol. But, but, but a green, one. yeah. <laughs> Gets you yeah, halfway, there, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the to something i can't can't quite fathom and from everyone that i saw on the threads that that tried it because there was a bunch of people like someone's got to go out there and give it a try everyone was <laughs> like no it's it's terrible but but it's a thing and yeah, and, yeah. mint choco yeah. is just a trending thing here in korea these days your students it's like it's almost like they're mbti like they ask each other like do you like mint choco or not and that that means something but i, I can know. i can i can like mint choco ice cream and hate a mint choco hamburger like that yeah. seems to me That's okay to <laughs> right, right. I can They're reconcile those line. two things, you know. Yeah. Um, I, it's it's not like oh, you don't like the mint choco, you don't like dog shit uh, dipped in uh, uh, mint <laughs> choco, then you don't like mint choco, you know. It's like uh, it's not exactly. There's a difference. It work There's that way. Difference. Yeah. There was um, another mint choco drink that wasn't alcoholic that was at that vegan restaurant. I forget what it was. I think it was just soda. Or maybe it was like sparkling water, like one of those like sugar free, like Trevi, um, Claire Brune, or what do you got in the States, LaCroix. I think it was like that. And it was mint choco they had next to it. I'm not sure. But I know I saw that exact bottle there. And I thought it was a poster first. I'm like, you got to be joking. Is that real? And I saw it in the cabinet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That can't be a good thing. For some yeah. reason, a drink doesn't offend me quite as much as as the dipping sauce or a hamburger. Like, yeah, I mean, like it's, it's like a Yahoo. Not as, as, but as long as Yahoo, Yahoo or Yoohoo, what, what is it called? Yoohoo, Yoohoo. the chocolate Yoohoo. chocolate soda. Yeah. yeah, I mean, as long as that Way exists, there, pretty much anything's on the table. But, um, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. strange. The, the picture of the chicken leg is just haunting. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna shut that off yeah <laughs> make it go away well i maybe as we, we can pivot to the next thing um which yeah, might that was explain just I that might explain this thing because uh korea has a drug problem uh and, and I, so <laughs> nice that might player. explain uh some of this stuff here but yeah um the uh but it's actually quite frightening the uh uh i was watching a documentary with my uh wife oh. and the fentanyl is starting to uh, pop up in uh, high schools and middle schools in Korea, which is really kind of shocking. So, and fentanyl, I don't know if that's you guys just like that. math, right? Basically, no, fentanyl is like heroin. Um, oh, right. It's basically like a thousand times stronger than morphine or something. But... So, how, how are they getting it? Like, not how, like, by what? Well, also that, like, how are they getting it? But uh, when I think of fentanyl, I think of it as a component of other opioid type medications and stuff or a portion that gets mixed into like heroin Do people exactly really, so people so access if, pure fentanyl well fentanyl, we, we had like a so it kind of starts like in america with the oxycontin crisis right you know people everyone got kind of hooked on on oxy and then when it got too expensive they um 
you know, with a lot of heroin addicts and overdoses and deaths in America um, over the past like 20, 20 years or so. Um, fentanyl is a, uh, I believe is a, Ryan, you'd probably know better than this, synthetic, right? It's like, a, it, it mimics the... Um, yeah it's like it's, it, they they it's a manufacturer synthetic opiate and uh it's much stronger than even oxycontin and so people are dying in america of fentanyl patches and things like that mm. and uh i think i think either it's manufactured maybe in china or sent to uh made in china and sent to mexico and then and then kind of smuggled across the border uh that way I mean, you can also get a prescription for it as well if you, you know, cancer patients and, and things right, like so that. So how are kids but getting it? In, in, in Korea, that's that's what's so weird is because like drugs are so taboo here. You know, you don't even right. bring it up, uh, you, you know, in, in you conversation. Um, There's no, I mean, yeah. Well, so, drugs so, here are funny because like all drugs are the same. You talk to a student like marijuana, LSD and heroin are they're just all the same. They're just drugs. right. Yeah. It, it's just no one, between them. one group. Yeah. 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 So, so, so how are they getting it? So they're, they're ordering it through um, like online uh, getting like prescriptions, kind of like forged prescriptions. And then apparently there are some doctors who are maybe less than reputable that are like distributing, you're like sending it through the mail to, to people that are said, you know, I'm a, sending a prescription for like a, you know, cancer diagnosis or something. And, but oh, it's actually so going to like all... kids and, and they're bringing it to school and sharing the patches with each other and you know some kid like collapsed in a, a bathroom and they had they you know basically scraped him up off the floor and and so this this is like becoming a thing where you, they're getting it they're getting it kind of like legally through the mail but well, that's I, different from the, yeah. the drugs that i've seen here or that i've seen on the news here than recently because um not fentanyl but there's a more like methamphetamine style drug i don't remember the name of it um there was recently a big bust where they arrested like seven thai people thailand yes, people yes. because they were like smuggling and of course the, the 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 seven thai people that they arrested like you know they were probably just you know the the runners and the the korean you know kingpin are still off doing what they want but that's that's coming from abroad that's that's not, that's yaba yep yaba is the uh it was is the methamphetamine pill from thailand that's okay. like a mixture of uh of meth and, you. and uh, <laughs> uh caffeine i think something like I, that and so a lot of like people take it in Thailand and they'll work in factories and they can pull like just crazy hours. Right. Um, but eventually you lose your mind because you're, you know, you're, you're awake for seven days and not eating or whatever. And so I would think that would be know. a drug that would get traction, unfortunately, yeah. especially among Korean teenagers. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. Like or, in here yeah. Is just so, I mean, what do they say? Like Korea is like the second highest consumer of coffee in general. Uh, next to I think Norway is number one or so wouldn't surprise me but I haven't seen the stat yeah That's crazy. but I mean well just like on campus have you guys seen this um in the front gate of campus there's uh a really common drink you can get um a lot a few coffee shops now featuring it it's uh it's a big iced tea looks like uh 600 mil or something it's a, a monster iced tea and you can get it with an extra shot of espresso so hmm. it's, it's it's disgusting I mean, that's not good <laughs> right, right yeah, yeah. iced tea with espresso well yeah. is it mint choco or just yeah, it probably is now you know <laughs> right right yeah because right there that that's full circle there's there's two of our stories put together but <laughs> but um like that type of behavior like that type of thing nobody's nobody's drinking that because that's delicious that's that sounds horrible like tannic tea with espresso bitter shot and then jacked up with a bunch of syrup or something i'm sure is what it is yeah that's that's just gross just okay? a sugar caffeine high basically that you're just running yeah. on for you know, a couple hours so i was talking yeah. to a student i asked him i said you know have you tried this like oh yeah yeah that's my go-to during like exams and crunch time projects <laughs> whatever i'm like that has got to be gross he's like it is but he's like it's a slow drip he's like i take it with me and i just i'm sucking on it all day and it just it keeps me me moving i think um in in general and not just korea but even in the states you have the same thing you know kids studying a lot um i mean all yeah. three of us at some yeah. point i don't know have you ever like really get into abusing caffeine you're like not a oh i mean i yeah these days not so much now i use it only when i when i need it but in, in uni my my buddy and i we would wake up in the morning and like the first one would stumble out of the room and immediately push on on the coffee machine so yeah, yeah that was our right. our everyday yeah, it's, it's, it's totally common for students so i would think something that 
is in pill form and is kind of discreet and you could just pop and then you can go to like the study room and you can you know you mean like like an adderall or something like that would that's what people use for studying all the time in in the states Mm -hmm. but but here i i think it's it's more of like just access like like in this weird way it kind of like like in japan how they had it was weird that that like uh psilocybin was had been was legal for many years in in japan and they even sold it at the store like you could get mushrooms but you can't but everything else was illegal but just because of a loophole in the law psilocybin was legal until they closed that gap maybe 10 years ago or something um or closed that loophole um but uh but here i think because drugs are categorized in this like flat like every drug is just a drug it's all the same law but in America, if you, you know, I think you ask a high school kid about fentanyl, they'd probably be scared to take it, you know, because because there's so much news about people dying from from overdosing on these, you know, kind of these these opiate pills here. I think there, there's there's no there's no like um, what am I trying to like historical, you know, analog. There's no like there's no history to it. So it's just kind of mm, like no context. It's all the same. Yeah, it's just just drugs, you know. And I and I think that's really dangerous because they need to understand what the you know category of this and how you could so easily die from overdosing on fentanyl, and uh, to just you know call it uh, everything's a drug. I think it it helps to understand the context a little bit. Um, how guess, prevalent is the fentanyl situation in Korea? Do you guys have any any math on it? Does I don't have any numbers. So a lot of this could be just like a kind of. Uh, overreaction to like one story you know like like a couple of kids got a hold of some and but it seems to be kind of affecting quite a few different different you know uh, like segments of young people who are becoming addicted to opiates and and getting it through the mail illegally so i think it's something to like look out for but i'm not sure it's hit like you know uh crisis point or anything like that that's just interesting. interesting. I mean, that kind of yeah. makes I, I did see an article like a week ago about South Korea declaring war on drugs. And of course, I mean, we know how yeah. well wars on drugs work, like drugs. Win that <laughs> yeah. war. But uh, that would explain where where this is coming from, then, actually. Korea's war on jealousy. It's so it's it will be over. No, it's yeah. uh, I, 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 you know, the, the way that my my family, like my wife thinks about it about drugs is i kind of like it like i like their kind of overreaction not overreaction but i mean like their it very strong reaction to the idea of taking drugs like i i actually don't mind my child being brought up in a country that is harsh around that stuff and i I don't know some people would disagree with me they're like come on man it's like weed is weed and this is that and whatever but i think it's here it's it's not the same situation as say like indonesia Okay, so like in Indonesia, there's, you know, in Singapore, Malaysia, you've got these laws where it's like, all right, if you get caught with weed, you get death penalty or something, you know, it's Mm -hmm. extreme. Mm -hmm. I don't know these specific laws, but yeah, everybody knows this. It's all these days. Singapore, Singapore, Thailand, now apparently Thailand's legal, but prior to prior to recent times, um, it's just this, this, uh, you know, total zero uh, sum. Yeah, you're done. Like, yeah, if you if you take a puff on a joint cut your head off you know it's just like <laughs> right, yes, <laughs> don't 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 pass go you know not going to jail straight to the guillotine P- puff puff so, pass or puff puff cut i guess yeah, yeah it's yeah so even if korea had has the same policy if it's that extreme i don't really know what the laws are here specifically which actually the reason i don't know the laws here kind of makes my point in indonesia you do have drugs there are they are around it is a thing it's a possibility that you know somebody who's going to get into trouble that might end up you know being executed or something it's possible in korea it's just not really even a thing Mm -hmm. like it's i think it's hard for our listeners to imagine this if you haven't been to korea uh or lived here for an extended period of time like I mean, I arrived here when I was, was I 29 years old? You know, and you're going out and stuff and, you know, maybe I've seen a joint one or two times. It's just not a thing. Whereas right, you know, right. Chicago, it's just always going to be around you. And if your friend says, hey, I really like weed. Okay, whatever. I'm not impressed or whatever. It's a thing. Here, it's just not. So even yeah. the laws being severe, there's no application for them. Because right. Happening. <laughs> it, it's kind of it, it's kind of a testament to the power of taboo 
like yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like just how like taboo drives this, like basically it's it's on autopilot. Like they don't really need these laws to in, be enforced because it's already kind of being it's it's in the hands of the people who have decided this just no thank you like we don't want anything to do with this you have caffeine nicotine alcohol we're good you know that's yeah, and ubiquitous something, yeah. something like weed you would think that there would be some prevalence of it somewhere because it's just a plant it's so easy to make like yeah any... and apparently historically it was quite right, right. To the common 60, right? Here yeah. yeah apparently the the soldiers there they smoke like ditch weed all the time yeah, it was but, just everywhere here. Right. So again, like what Jack's saying, it's kind of like the taboo came in and just kind of squashed it because anybody in the countryside could be grow. I mean, someone could plant on Namsan, I don't know, maybe in your bedroom or something. Oh, I mean, home growing is a thing. But I, I had a Korean friend whose uh, grandmother, the police came and took her poppy seeds or poppy plants. <laughs> <laughs> she was growing, she was growing poppy plants, not, not for the, not, not to like manufacture opium, but to make like a tea, but it's the, it's not a, not a, a tea that would give you get you high um but but they 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 took them away they just pulled they pulled them out of her her yard and said you can't have these and uh <laughs> i saw an article i think last year some some dude like his mom owned like a, a uchiwan a, a kindergarten and the guy was growing weed plants on the roof of the uchiwan oh yeah <laughs> right right or that was the uh, children's science project, I believe. Is that uh... <laughs> yeah. the kids just Classic. brought some seeds? <laughs> yeah, grow these at home and then bring them back to the teacher uh, when they're nice and tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's just not really a, a thing. So it's surprising to hear you say that there's a fentanyl. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think it's I think it's just like a loophole on the internet where they were able to get you know fake prescriptions for these drugs and then doctors weren't weren't doing due diligence and sending out these fentanyl patches which you know were were you know manufactured legally because they're for people that have mm. you know that are dying and in, in in massive pain. Um, but uh, the fact that they were getting in the hands of of kids is just kind of reminiscent of the crisis we had in America, and it's just like wow these these things are. This fentanyl and oxycontin stuff is just, you know, how these pharmaceutical companies are saying these are the miracle drugs. There's such a uh, they they become such a uh, um, so dangerous, you know, just a just a terrible, um, insidious kind of uh, force, you know. It just yeah, and the way the way you describe it also kind of I feel like it's starting to answer my question that I began with, which is why fentanyl instead of something that makes more sense to me, like methamphetamines. Yeah, like that makes a lot more sense because of like the culture here and what people already gravitate towards. But I think what you're explaining now makes a lot of sense. It's probably just access. There's probably it's not like hundred percent like yeah. like like why isn't there like you know green fresh bud here like weed well, right. because and you can't order that online in any type of quasi legal way it's just not accessible and exactly like methamphetamines aren't as accessible just somebody maybe it was like a group of websites that some kids found where you could get these patches specifically this one brand or something exactly and, what happened mm -hmm. yep Experience. and then they and they and they're all on on you know apps with their friends and they're you know, starting groups and sharing it and so hey i took this fentanyl patch and i've had this experience you got to try it and it, you know and all of a yeah. sudden boom it's it's just so a, based, based on that suspicion hopefully yeah this is just a, a one-off thing yeah, I hope they can. They can. They should be able to close that gap and punish the. You know, the. Uh, hope they don't punish the kids. You know, too much. They're just kids are are supposed to be dumb, but uh, you know the people selling them to to the kids. Yeah, yeah throw the throw the book at those guys. At least I hope it's just a mistake. But, yeah. Uh, so yeah. so should we uh, should we wrap up our uh, the return patch, and yeah, uh, mint, mint Chaco fentanyl. <laughs> Dipped, yeah, why dipped not come back chocolate. with that you know, why not? <laughs> gotta start <Right>. somewhere <laughs> sure sure <laughs> nice uh, yeah this is fun guys let's 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 keep it going let's do a few more yeah 100 yeah, yeah. we're uh the patch is back tell your friends spread the news <laughs> not the fentanyl patch the soul patch that's the good one so that's right. let's all be right. clear <laughs> all right thanks guys nice. we'll catch you next time okay. 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 darkness
impulse adapting to fit to the constructed chaos accepted as it In this complex of fires I exist without sound I am lost to the future, forced underground Where I frequently polish the steel of my frame 